Hello. Um, recently, I've been getting a lot of messages and interest on how I model my necks in Rhino. Um, I got shown this by a buddy at Avia Guitars um, a couple months ago, and whilst it does take quite a long time to learn the process, once you've got it down, it's dead simple. Um, it mainly util utilizes the network surface command, which a lot of people seem to be having troubles with, but it is so unbelievably powerful once you've learned it. Um, all of these are network surfaces, and this is basically what the neck ends up looking like. There are a couple of YouTube tutorials, I suppose, on making general necks, fender necks mainly, um, so non-angled headstock, no volute, um, flat heel and I personally didn't find many use um, especially because I wanted to make these types of necks anyway so yeah this is what they end up looking like and they mill very nicely so what you're gonna need is the body outline uh, you don't really need the shit inside it but you need the outline itself, you need the screw holes if you want to see and see them, and um, a sort of marker as to where the fretboard is going to go on the body. So what you need is the body outline, screw holes if you want to see and see them, and a marker to locate where the fretboard is going on is going to land on the body basically. I'm currently using the top of the humbucker, but I know that it's quite popular to have the neck finish before the humbucker and then have the fretboard overhang uh, join where the humbucker starts. So you can do that if you wish. Uh, you also need, of course, the fretboard. Um, it's very useful to have the frets in the fretboard because you use them to determine the thickness of the neck at a certain point on the fretboard. So say you wanted um, a neck 21 millimeters thick at the first fret. You of course need the first fret to be able to do that. Um, and then lastly, you're going to need the headstock itself. So next, we're going to want to design the shape and thickness, I suppose, of the back of the neck. Um, to do that, I tend to go from the first fret and roughly a couple frets in from where the heel is. So I'm going to select the point tool and I'm going to uh, put one in the center of the first fret and then I'm going to move it vertically, not vertically, um, but up the thickness of the neck that I want minus the fretboard. So if I want a 21, 21 mil thick at the first fret, I'm going to want to minus the fingerboard, which is usually 7 mil for me. Um, so I'm going to want 14 mil ish. Um, yeah, 14 mil. So I'm just going to type in 14, and then I'm going to make sure author is on, so it's straight up from the first fret. And with that marker, I can now use this rectangle. Uh, just click on the corner thing. It's the rectangle with three points, or from three points, and you want the two ends of the fret. And you want to bring it up, make sure the point's selected, um, and so it's touching the point. So you've got a rectangle that kind of overlaps the fretboard itself. Um, so this means that we can now select the curve tool, um, so the con control point curve, sorry. Uh, you want to make sure you're selecting the end. Okay, we want one point near. It should be yeah, should be near. So you want to make sure it's not selecting the fretboard, but it is selecting the rectangle that we just drawn. Uh, you want one point on this side. Doesn't matter where at the moment. One point here um, on the top, and then you want the the last one to go straight to the mid. So once we've got this curve, um, what you're going to want to do, I'm going to. Enter full screen on this quickly. 
um, you're going to want to make sure the record history is turned on for this. Um, it's, it's down here. Oh. Um, yep, turn it on. We're going to want to mirror the curves that we've just drawn from the center point like that. This means that we can now turn our control points on with this button and whatever we do to this one is then going to be mirrored to the next. So this is where you kind of decide what shape you want to go with. I'm going to go with like a regular C shape I suppose because I quite like them when it comes to thin necks. Maybe a D? No. No, let's go for a C. You just gotta play around with it basically until so you get what you want. Yeah, that looks good. That's basically what I want. Um now we can delete the rectangle and we have our shape which can now join. Okay, so we're going to want to basically repeat everything we've just done for... I don't like to go for the fret straight after it, I like because you need to transition the heel into the fret. So I like leaving maybe one fret of a gap. So again, point in the middle of the fret. We're going to want to move the, move the point, the thickness that we want. So the first one was 14mm. I want to make the next one about 14.5 because I like thin necks 14.5 make sure it's straight up then we can get the rectangle from three points make sure it's from the two front ends and there we go we now have a rectangle to work from again we want the control point curve from the end we're going to want to make sure it's make sure it's on the rectangle and not the fingerboard again uh, one, two, three. There we go. And now we can record history. Mirror from the midpoint. And once again, just play around until we get the shape that you want. Um, it should work with. Well, the, the volutes and everything should still work with. Uh, the more extreme shapes. I think that that's what I want. Just checking. Yeah, that's that's all right. It flattens out quite a bit. But for demonstration purposes, it will do. So once again, I'm going to join this curve. All right. So now we have our two shapes. Ooh two shapes, we have our headstock and we have our heel. Now I'm going to make sure all my four tiles are back again. I'm going to, I want to basically, well, yeah, they're currently flat. We want to rotate them 90 degrees so they're standing up of course. So select the curve, and rotate from the centre of the fret and you want to come down to this window and make sure ortho is on from here and perfect 90 degrees. So now our fret, uh, our neck thickness is standing up and we want to repeat that for the next one. Awesome. So now it's time to blend the, the thickness of the neck or the neck shape into the heel. Um, this is where it starts getting a little bit confusing but what we want to do is first of all create a reference reference line I suppose um, you just want a polyline and you want that to go from the middle of this fret I don't know if turned on oh sorry when if you use the record history function it'll be the end of the fret rather than the mid for some reason when you join them it doesn't create a mid it creates two ends uh, so yeah, you want to select from the end, which is the mid of the fret, and you want to basically bring it straight back, like this. So that means we can 
use things to snap to it and use it as a reference to make sure everything's centered. From that, um, I create a single point using making sure the intersection is, is turned on. And you definitely want the four tiles on for this because you're going to want to find the intersection of the big line that we've just drawn on the heel. So it's going to be here. Now, as you can see, if you're looking at the top left view, which is the top view, um, as I move around, it doesn't it doesn't move the point. But in the right, in the perspective view, in the top right, you'll see that it, it snaps above and below. You want to make sure that it's snapping onto the heel rather than onto the line we've just drawn, like that. So we've now got a point here, which is still intersecting but it's on the heel rather than on this line down here okay so from that we can now draw our first our first line that allows us to create the surface so we're gonna select our point which is from the heel basically so, and now our second point is going to be on this line doesn't matter where at the moment. And our third point is going to be at the end of the fret. So from this view, it's going to look like it's going dead straight. But of course, in the other plane, it's not. Um, we can now turn on our points and start manipulating this line. So you get. The, I suppose the heel transition that you want. You just want to make sure that it's snapped to this line. And you want to make sure it's basically going dead center on this axis, and you should be good to go. Just make sure it intersects with the for end and the heel. So once you've got a sh uh, like a transition shape that you like, we now need to do the two sides. It's so going to do exactly the same thing. I'm going to start a transition from here. I'm going to create a, a point here and then down to the end of the fret here. Now I can turn the points on again and start playing around until it's something I like. You can go for quite an extreme heel, I suppose, where, like, like with these, the, the dip's quite sudden, and then it tapers off, or you can go with something far more transition-y. But I quite like the extreme heels. And once we've got one side, we'll do exactly the same for the other. So from this point to here to here. Drop it on and something like that. that looks okay. Alright, now we're gonna split the heel shape with the two outside ones. So we now have this shape rather than it selecting the whole thing. Uh, this is gonna be our first network curve. So I just want to, at the moment, check that the heel is going to look okay. Um, we'll delete the surface after and then, basically with the network curve, once all of the lines are in in place, including the volume and the neck and stuff like that, we'll then do one big network curve to make one surface rather than a bunch of surfaces joining. Um, but yeah, I'm going to do a network curve right now just to see what the the heel section is going to look like before that. Um, so to do a network curve, it's quite simple actually. You need the two two curves that you're gonna gonna surface together uh, or transition together. So this edge and this edge, and then you just want your I suppose guide curves they were called. So that is that is the shape that we're going to want to generate. So I select all of that, type a net. And it should say network surface. Of course, you can preview it. Yep, preview it. Click OK. Um, 
and then on the rendered. Oh, no, I think shaded is going to be better. You basically just want to make sure there's no lumps and stuff like that. That hill to me looks pretty good. There's no noticeable bumps, nothing that's going to come out funny. If you really want to be um, thorough in the way that you're checking, if you select the surface, you can click Analyze Surface and its Environment Map. And you can uh, you can select whatever you want basically, and it it's basically a reflective surface. It's very very easy to see if there's any inconsistencies in the surface itself, which there isn't in this. Check to that. Right, so that's the the heel done. Um, I can now delete that surface because we're going to regenerate it later. And now I want to sort out the back of the neck. Again, very simple. You just want to select a polyline. I'm going to go from the midpoint, or as it's called here, the end point of the, the fret. Not the fret, the back. You, you know, the neck curve. There we go. And then we want to join it with the other one. That's basically it. We just now need to split this with um, no, you want to split it with these okay, so you've got the first fret and you've got the where they join basically so now we have these two lines and once again we can do a network surface from these, so you want the, the two Neck shapes, you want the two outside lines and the guide grid in the middle. And we can network surface that. Um, that looks absolutely fine. You want to make sure that these lines are going dead straight. Um, I've had it a couple times where the, the lines wobble a little bit, and you want to eliminate that as much as possible. So, when you end up network surfacing, uh, the volute the volute transition back into the neck it can play up with the neck the neck surface itself so we're gonna create some more guide curves um, for the the big network surface that we're gonna do later but we may as well do it now um, what you want to do is divide these two lines. So you select the lines, divide, and I usually find that 8 is a good amount. And it basically just divides the line and puts points there. Um, I'm going to want to create this network again. So net, network surface. Okay. Now you select the, the surface itself and you'll type in section. And what section is going to do is it's going to allow you to create um, it's going to create a curve basically for you following the surface uh, you'll see in a minute but you've got the section tool up you just want to click from point to point it's that simple see it's generated a curve along the surface and you need these because the the surface isn't consistent it's tapering from one end to the other so this is the easiest way to generate the curves correctly. So yeah, just point to point. This will probably take a minute. You want to make sure that they're definitely on the points and not not snapped to any other bit. Once that's done, you can just press enter. Delete the surface. Now we have all of these curves that we can uh, reference the neck there. We can use as guide curves basically for the network surface. You can get rid of the points, it just 
clears up the screen a bit, they're not needed anymore. Hmm. Nope. Alright. Yeah. Yeah, let's just delete the points. Cool. So we now have our heel and our the back of our neck basically. Um, now what we've got to do is the volume. The volume is a bit tricky, but again, once you get it down, it's going to be pretty, pretty easy. Um, so for the volume, um, we basically want to start by creating the surface for the back of the headstock. Um, to do that. Um, you can just use the three-point rectangle tool like we have done before. You want to just basically make a rectangle that's bigger than the headstock in terms of width, but you want to make sure that it ends up finishing at the nut, like so. You can now rotate that from the center. Mm, come on, from the center of the the nut. And you want to rotate it the same angle as the, the headstock itself. So we can then move it vertically, once again, from the midpoint up the thickness of the headstock that you're creating. I tend to use 14mm, but as long as it fits your tuners, it doesn't, it doesn't affect anything. So that's a part of how the volume is going to go basically. Um, the next bit is to create basically a giant arch. It sounds weird but you'll see why in a minute. You want to create a polyline from roughly roughly an area like this where you just want the volume to transition into the headstock on the headstock side. You want a polyline from here and you want to make sure it's going straight up in the front view. Uh, about 45 mil seems about right for me. Something like that. So just a straight up line. Um, you're gonna want to create the same thing on the other side now. Bit, bit more difficult because, because we're going further up. If you do 45 again, you're gonna end up with a, a higher line. So to battle that. Do the same thing, uh, a section like so, where you just want it to blend. Then you come down to the front view. You make sure your smart track is on. If we use the top of this to then draw a line, basically, if you hover over where you want it, it will then create a smart track from that. And you just want to make sure it's not perpendicular, you want to make sure it's intersecting. This is a proper ball egg to get right. There we go. So we've got two straight up lines now that are the same height overall, or they finish at the same place. Uh, we can now create another polyline that joins the two together. So we've kind of got like a, a rectangle thing going on. From that rectangle, we want to use the circle tool from the center of it, and you don't want it to end up in that orientation, you want to end up like so. So you've got, yeah, something like that. Let's split the circle with the center of that, delete the bottom. You can also delete that section. Now you want to join that. So yeah, you've got basically a, a big ass arch. Um, again, you'll see why in a minute. Okay, so f with this arch, you want to be creating just like we did for the heel with this this line, which was basically a reference just to snap stuff to. You want to be doing the same with this one. Uh, this one's going to be a polyline, it's going to start from the, the center line basically of the back of the neck. 
and it's just going to go straight up like that. And now we can use this line to create a point that intersects. Let me make sure you can see the top here. It intersects with both these, the arch and the, the center line. And once again, um, in the top view, um, if you're hovering over where you want it to intersect, intersect, you just want to make sure in the perspective you're snapping to the arc and not not the center line like that with that we can use the create control point curve from this point here and then we can use this line as a reference and the end so in the right view it looks something like that we can now turn our control points on and manipulate this line here this point sorry along the center line to give a sharper transition into the volume or a smooth one. So that's half of the volume done. Now to make the other half or the headstock half you're gonna wanna use this surface, it's not surface yet, you wanna use this square that we've created. Um, you're gonna wanna single polyline on one side basically and Basically, I'm creating a polyline from the corner to about halfway. You should be able to see it at the moment. But we're going to rotate it from the end 90 degrees. So it's now 90 degrees to the rectangle rather than 90 degrees to the, the rhino file, I suppose. Um, okay, so from this we can now start to create our control point curve which determines the back of the headstock or how the, the body transitions on the headstock surface. Um, basically for this you just want to make sure that you're starting this transition after the tuners or your tuners will be then placed on a surface that gradually gets thicker which you don't want. Um, so just keep that in mind we're going to want to start our control point curve somewhere round about here. So as you can see, it's, it's lower than the, the tuner itself. Um, second point you're going to want to be about right here. Third point about right here. And fourth point. About here. These, this is very rough at the moment, but if you're looking from the right view, you can kind of see a volume taking shape here. So this is the back of the headstock. Volume transition for the headstock side, and then the volume volume transition from the next side. Um, so you now want to be looking mainly in the right view, with your control points on, and start being able to manipulate this volume to however you want it <laughs> the design is basically completely up to you of how the volume is going to look um, here I've gone for quite a sharp volume but that's what I like. So F11 turns the control points off. We can now start using this to actually create the volume itself by first of all, um, I was going to copy that but you don't need to. You can just extrude this curve. Um, where's extrude curve? Surface, extrude curve, straight. 
and you just want to extrude it to the other side of that basically just like that we now want to split this rectangle with that surface we can delete that and basically create a square again sorry rectangle square rectangle one of them and uh, join it together and you want a surface planar curves so now we have this whole surface thing here which we can join together and into one one big surface if you look at it like this we're kind of getting the, the body there now so for now you can select that and hide it just to get it out of the way we also don't need this, we can delete that we're going to focus on the, the volume itself from the neck transition now um, now this is done with the network surface again so bear with me um, we're going to first of all want to take our headstock and split it with, with the arch and the two sides basically so we should have these two pieces here next we want to make sure that we have the two sides like this we don't want any we don't want any frets involved or the nut or anything like that you're going to want the, the transition here you're going to want the how many pieces it's now made up of for the fretboard side and this section you might want to join that all together so we've got one line we're going to repeat that for the next side so we've got these two sides and then once again repeat it for the middle section we can now delete unless you want to of course continue to manipulate them after generating you can delete those two lines now we're pretty much ready for the network surface you want to select the the heel the two sides the middle section and the arch so these these are basically the outlines of the surface we're creating and then we also want to make sure we're selecting our guide curves we may have to come back and place a few more guide curves where the, the volume is going to be um, it's quite a big area and it can mess up a little bit but for now I'll just give this a go from the network surface click OK I know it looks a bit strange at the moment, but what I'm just looking out for is to make sure that there is no lumps. No lumps on the surface, just like we did for the heel. I'll actually use the environment map to really scrutinize it. It's not perfect, so I will go and add a few guide curves quickly to sort this out. Mainly where the, the neck transitions into the headstock itself, the the volume, sorry, dips a little bit. So yeah, I'm gonna go sort that out. So there's two ways you can do this. Basically, um, you can either use the section tool again, so we generate just the volume section. Um, like this. I think that'll work. Yeah. We can either generate the network of the volume and then section this 
from the nut like this from there to there but it tends to mess up like this basically um, where the ends of the ends of the curve don't meet the or don't intersect with the fretboard side so that ain't gonna work for this I'm just gonna use um, this arc I'm not sure what it's called it's just an arc tool from the nut nut sides intersecting with the volume surface uh, volume curve here so that's just a, an extra guide curve and you can continue to fill this area up with more guide curves if you're still having troubles with it the main issue for this volume is because it's angled as you can see it, it doesn't go straight across the head socket it angles up so I'm always going to have a little bit of trouble there but that's easily taken care of with sanding and stuff like that if it comes to milling it so I'm going to create another network surface with all of these curves just like that Net. perspective and um, as you can see the curves when it especially when it's coming up to here a lot more fluid they, they go straight across rather than wavy that should be okay I'm still seeing a bit of an issue with this transition but it really depends on how many guide curves you, you want to place in there that's gonna be alright for this purpose yep. so we've now got this surface if we type in show brings us back this to create the volume now we basically just select the neck surface split it with this and then we can delete that <coughs> and you now want to select the headstock and project it onto the surface so we now have these curves here um, this isn't actually a curve it's where the set the surface intersects with it. So if you click on the surface and type in silhouette, it will then draw curves along the outside of that surface, which we can now use like that. And make sure that all of the curves are selected because I know that sometimes you get very small gaps. Might be one there, but I'll check by joining it. One closed curve, okay, so that's absolutely fine. Now I've got a closed curve that we can split this section with this surface with it, even just like that. So now I've got a surface on the back of the neck that transitions into the body. Just like that. You can see with the silhouette where the the out the web where the surface isn't perfect basically with this line it always seems to generate this one line but as you can see it's from here to here it's perfect then it starts getting a little bit funky but not the end of the world once again can be easily taken care of with sanding and stuff like that um, this is all you need to CNC the neck. You don't actually need this back surface. All you need to CNC the back of the neck is that. Because you'd run, you'd probably trim the sound of it. Um, 
and then you'd run a 3D finish pass, uh, roughing the finish pass, to create the back of this volume, and then you'd do the same with the, the next side of things, and they'll join together and create your volume for you, just like this. But this is going a bit further, so we can create a full model from it if that's what you you're wanting. Um, easiest way to do it would be to select that surface and extrude curve straight down by the thickness of that stop. It does look a bit messy, but it's one of those things you just have to deal with, really. Now, to do the top side of the neck, where the fretboard's going to go, basically, you want to, first of all, create the, the headstock, headstock front surface. Um, and I'm just going to have to split some of these lines down to get what I want. But basically, you just want the original headstock drawing. As I go, I'm just joining it into one curve slowly. Uh, split that. Let's get into the nut. Now I have one closed curve, that is the original headstock from the nut. So I can do a surface, not a planar curve, surface, patch I believe it is. Yeah, surface patch. Check out what these are, these are just intersection bits. Surface patch. Um, and then we can do exactly the same for fretboard. Looks like I'm going to need to once again split a couple of things. One, two. Where is it? There. Yep. Alright. So I got that. Just like this. Join it into a closed curve surface patch. I'll have front surface and for the last of it is the heel. I'm going to want to explode that into its segments basically. Yep. I'm going to want to draw the ends. And you just basically want to want to draw the the polylines to create the four sides of each patch. We're going to do just like that. So surface patch. This one's already no yeah. polyline. Select the four sides and then set this patch once again. And the last one. Now we can patch the 
all of this. Just like that. So now we have a finished look. Of course, you can do the tune holes if you choose to. You can do whatever else. But that is a finished neck with an angled headstock and a volute. And I'm just going to select it all. Analyze surface environment. And you can now go ahead and check all of your curves, like how they transition into each other. This one, where the heel meets the the neck, is absolutely flawless. However, there is a very small issue with the volume section on this one, but it's not something I'm going to worry about. Looks good enough for me. And of course, you got the volume on the backside of the headstock. 